At the end of 2023, Javier Millet formally communicated that the country renounces to join the BRICS group, made up of the emerging powers Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The decision is a strong gesture in favor of the United States, from where Millet's administration hopes to obtain financing, either from the IMF or private investors, which will allow it to sustain itself as a government. This decision implies a geopolitical distancing, especially with China and Russia. However, Millet has expressed his rejection of the closeness with these countries, pointing out that he will not promote agreements with communist regimes. At the same time, it implies turning its back on the fastest growing countries in the world, which have substantial financial resources and which structurally need food, energy, and mining, sectors in which Argentina has advantages and can compete. The unusual thing about this case is that the government is wasting opportunities that were already won by previous administrations and that dozens of countries would accept without thinking about it. The letter signed by Millet states that the foreign policy of the government over which I have been president for a few days now differs in many aspects from that of the previous government. In this sense, some decisions taken by the previous administration will be reviewed. Among them is the creation of a specialized unit for the country's active participation in the BRICS. In this regard, I'd like to inform you that in this instance, the incorporation of the Argentine Republic as a full member as of January 1, 2024 is not considered appropriate. This note was sent to the presidents of the five countries that make up the bloc. Luis Inacio Lula da Silva from Brazil, Cyril Ramaphosa from South Africa, Narendra Modi from India, Xi Jinping from China, and Vladimir Putin from Russia. These countries represent 42% of the world's population, 23% of global GDP, one-third of the planet's territory, and 18% of total international trade. Thus, in this video, we'll analyze how this process of incorporation began and what are the consequences for Argentina after having rejected this proposal to join the BRICS. Let's get started. The incorporation of Argentina to the BRICS group of countries was decided at the Johannesburg Summit in South Africa in August last year, during the presidency of the former president Alberto Fernandez. At that multilateral meeting, the incorporation of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt and Iran, which are key countries at the time of setting international oil and gas prices, was also voted. Javier Millet's government formalized in the last days of last year its resignation from the BRICS group of emerging countries, which had announced the incorporation of Argentina in August last year, together with other countries. The Argentine president pointed to the United States and Israel as the main strategic allies of his government, stating that his foreign policy stance differs in many aspects from that of the previous government. That's to say, if Malay had not defined the formal resignation from the BRICS, Argentina would have shared the multilateral scenario with China, Russia, and Iran, which support, with different tactics, the terrorist organization Hamas. This Palestinian group attacked Israel and killed thousands of Jews in the early morning of October 7th last year. Thus, for the time being, Argentina would not be part of the BRICS, which would have represented 42% of the world's population, 25% of the global GDP, and 18% of international trade. With this decision, the group, which intends to position itself as a counterweight to the hegemony of the United States and the European Union, could lose some of its influence in the region and the world. Although it maintains a presence in important markets and weight in the global economy, such as the oil market, the refusal of President Javier Millet to the formal invitation to join the bloc raises questions about the effects of the decision, which overturns the previous government's management. What impact will it have on Argentina's relationship with China, its second largest trading partner? What will be the consequences to be assumed by Javier Millet? And hey, if you're liking this video, I invite you to like it and subscribe to the channel. We'd be very grateful for that. Let's continue. Javier Millet has already stated that he was not willing to negotiate with countries identified with the international left. As a result of this, Millet's government already has a first consequence after the refusal to join the BRICS. It's the rejection of the swap by China. Conocet researcher Gabriel Marino considers that it's a regrettable decision, typical of an ultra-ideologized foreign policy. The BRICS bloc expresses the emerging world that is growing, in contrast to the relative stagnation of most of the West and the global North. Since 2020, the BRICS have surpassed the Group of Seven, the United States, Japan, 
Germany, Italy, France, the United Kingdom, and Canada as a percentage of world GDP. Not even Bolsonaro dared to slam the door on China, since Brazil, during his presidency, remained within the bloc. Then Lula made a diplomatic effort so that the emerging powers would consider Argentina's entry. International relations experts conclude that improvisation is the response associated with the denial of change. And this occurs when governments assume that the old ways still apply, even if the terrain has changed. Not joining the BRICS is part of a misreading of the prevailing dynamics in the international scenario. The they don't see applies in this case, an international order in transition, which requires other types of alliances if the country's development is to be achieved. Argentine economists define this as a lack of respect, especially to China and Brazil, which pushed Argentina to join the BRICS. A big mistake is infantilism, when international relations are excessively ideologized, either to the right or left, and thus subordinating Argentina's national interests. In this, Bolsonaro and Itamarati demonstrated greater long-term intelligence. The country had great opportunities in terms of technological cooperation, housing, food, knowledge economy, and agriculture from a closer relationship with the BRICS. In addition to the customs agreements, BRICS is more important because it's not a customs union, but an international scheme for the development of the countries that are part of it. And this goes beyond the particularities of each of the countries, since Russia is changing its political system, China has problems with feeding its population, and all of the members have their problems, as does Argentina, in any case. But this even strengthens a cooperation agreement. For example, unlike what would have happened with a free trade agreement with the United States in the FTAA, it would have allowed us to invade all of Latin America with products from the United States. What is happening with the BRICS is a system that allows trading between the parties. The key is, and will be, in the ability of both Brazil and Argentina to understand how to offer their knowledge to the rest of the member countries and take their own, beyond the financing that the BRICS bank can bring. Faced with an economy without dollars, the possibility of using alternative currencies, as proposed by the BRICS powers, was a very interesting opportunity. Argentina loses a huge market in terms of comparative advantages, from where it could weave strategic dynamics such as de-dollarization. From the BRICS, they already know that Argentina resigned its membership. Xi Jinping did his best to incorporate the country during the government of Alberto Fernandez, and now he failed to convince Millet, despite the pressure exerted from certain diplomatic channels. Xi seeks allies in the region, and Argentina was a piece that fit in its plan to dispute commercial interests with the United States. China is trying to limit Washington's influence at a global level, and the request for the incorporation of Alberto Fernandez was functional to its geopolitical pretensions. Millet has a different view of the international chessboard. President Millet has a position closer to the US and Israel, and his ideology rejects China's agenda and its foreign policy canon. I am not going to push for a deal with communists, Millet replied when asked about BRICS. Argentina's resignation from the BRICS implies a geopolitical shift with respect to preventing the country from sharing the multilateral stage with China, Russia, and Iran, who support the Hamas organization. The reasons are clearly ideological. Millet has considered a new foreign policy alignment more Western, Eurocentric. In this sea of uncertainty, the future of the exchange is of greater concern to Buenos Aires. Millet has declared that he intends to continue trading with Beijing without this decision affecting the bilateral link, but the opportunity cost is extremely high. Pretending that the break with the BRICS will not have any economic effects is very wrong. It's a very serious mistake in this international context. The world is in the midst of a hegemonic transition, where the BRICS powers are becoming more prominent. The world is now looking to emerging countries. If Millet needs foreign currency, he'll find it in China or India, but not in the United States, which is still dragging the effects of the 2008 crisis. The weight of the Asian giant in the international economic architecture restricts the possibilities of a distancing as the one that, originally, the now Argentine president professed. China is a financial power and a very important voice in the International Monetary Fund and other financial organizations to which the Argentinians periodically resort. Argentina's pendularity cannot affect relations with China in a structural way. There may be four years of government without great progress, but perhaps a new government of a different political sign will appear. Other relations with China will become important again, and the pendularity in foreign policy will show again that it's an important actor. 
One of the central axes to understand the public discussion that awakened the rejection to the inclusion in the block is the timing of the decision taken by the current executive. After years of negotiations, the invitation to join the BRICS extended to Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates seems now to have constituted an ideal window of opportunity for Argentina's entry. The opportunity was now, precisely because several countries were about to be admitted to join. We don't know at what point the bloc will reopen for the Argentine government. In this stage of BRICS enlargement, Argentina had a very valuable opportunity to trade in strategic terms with countries that have an enormous weight, not only in demographic terms, but also in terms of what they represent in world trade. That opportunity was amputated by the president's decision. In a few years, the country will probably look at this bloc again. Now, there will be a list of 40 aspirants demanding entry, and Argentina will be quite displaced. Now I ask you who are watching this video, do you think Millet will be able to remedy this big mistake by making beneficial negotiations with the United States in the future? Let me know your answer in the comments box. And if you like this video, I invite you to subscribe to our channel and leave a like for more videos like this one. And with that, we'll see you next time.